if you are a lady or you are a young man at the stage where you know that God is calling you to start a family one of the biggest mistakes we do maybe especially if you are a lady out of excitement you do not talk to God you do not pray to God about the relationship you are going into because you are too excited and you are deeply in love and you're blind your eye is totally covered hello the worst thing that can ever happen to a man in this life is to marry the wrong wife and for a woman to marry the wrong husband now, there is something called a wrong wife. There is something called a wrong husband. Can you hear me? It's not in the Bible. Though. It is proceeding out of the mouth of God. Hello? A wrong husband exists. A wrong wife exists. husband is the husband you just got married and then your entire destiny what God planned for you to be what God designed your role, your purpose on earth in life simply because of a husband or a wife you fail God you fail your purpose you fail your own self simply because you are married Hello. Just because of ordinary marriage, you turn down God's purpose for your life. God's de your destiny. You say zero. If they ask you why do you do this, you say, you know, the Bible says I should submit to my husband. So I'm trying to please my husband to the extent. That you forfeit your destiny you forfeit your purpose on earth just to please your wife or just to please your husband hello there's something called wrong marriage simply because your wife always said god forbid i'll never marry a person you know there are so many young girls that say that so you, you want to please your wife, you run away from your calling. Hello? Just because you want to make your wife happy, you run away from your calling. And you, you say, ah, God for me, I can never marry a woman, blah, 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 blah. So you twist yourself. You, you design another destiny for yourself, another focus, another purpose, another mission for yourself, all different from the one you received as your own calling in life. At the last day, you will be asked. You know what Jesus will ask you? Where is your fruit? Hello? Where is your fruit? Your fruit means the, your destiny, what you have produced on earth. What have you bathed? What have you given birth to while you were on earth? What have you done? And most of us, because of our husband, because of our wives, we will pass the blame. Remember the parable? Parable that the master gave talent to this one. Ten talents, five talents, two talents. Most of us, most of us, at the point of marriage, is where we bury our talent. Hello? You bury your talent at the point of marriage. So, I don't 
don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying now. Because what I'm saying now, I'm not supposed to say on Easter. But I'm saying it on Easter. So I think the Holy Spirit is talking. So what I'm saying is not in the Bible. Oh. It is the word of God that proceeds from the mouth of God. Brother Paul said, in fact, let me stay like that. So do not allow your environment to push you or persuade you into marriage that you are not prepared for. Eh? Because all your classmates in SS3, A to Z, they have married except you. Everybody in your year one, year two, year three in university, they have married except you. You are, you are listening to the voice of environment. Environment is convincing you. And you are allowing the voice of this environment to be more powerful even than the, the voice of God. What I'm saying is not in the Bible. Oh. The Spirit of God would like you to trust Him. So some of us are influenced so that anything that comes out as far as he's a man or he's a woman and you are you have been looking for anything. Listen. Do not allow your life to be under any kind of pressure when talking about marriage. Eh? The purpose of marriage is, for, is to fulfill destiny. When talking about marriage, I'm talking to young people, learn to rely on him on him rely you may not understand what I'm saying now but later you will understand because 90% of almost all Christian marriages 90% a lot of people if immediately after getting married one year two years they start desiring they were not married They start wishing, ah, I wish I was not married. They begin to regret. They begin to regret. Two, three years after marriage, you wish. So you now discover that all what you were panting for was a ceremony. A day that you wear white clothes and everybody will feel that you have entered Kemero do. Eh? You, after two to three years, you now discover that all what you were panting for was just ceremony. You just wanted people to know that you have arrived. People are influencing your life, influencing your decision. Because of what people will say, what will people think, what will people say, what will people think. Two years later, you start looking for a pastor to call. Say, you know me? It's Pastor Kalim. <laughs> you call Pastor Kalim, call Academy, call all the past our pastors. Uh, looking for who to report. Hello. So I've spoken to the young people who are yet to get married. Nobody is pursuing you. Will you say that? I tell you the truth. Nobody is pursuing you. Pray. And then if you are in this church and you date any, you date somebody's daughter up to one year and above, you are going to hell.
because because you are a wicked man you are you are highly wicked you hit you you did somebody's daughter and carry her move around the whole of you everybody knows the two of you one year two years you are wicked wickedness because it's not good listen this one is not in the bible though. it's a word from the spirit of god you carry somebody's daughter one year plus but one year i say one year one year is too much no one hello you carry enter kilimanjaro enter mr Bix. enter for the face enter Enter everywhere. Greet all your friends. Greet everybody. And hold our hands. Greet, greet everywhere. One year, two years, you are still greeting people with somebody's daughter. It's not, it's not the will of God. Can you hear me? No. It's not the will of God. Don't do it. You are being wicked. That is called Yahoo. <laughs> you are scamming somebody's child. And she believes you. She trusts you. Am I one year? You've not heard anything. Leave that place. Have you heard me? It's bad. You cannot say you don't have money. You are talking rubbish. I got mine with 5,000 naira. My wife is my living witness. I met my wife today. I fixed my wedding next month. I told her I want us to get married next month. And she said, where are we going to live? My landlord is here. <laughs> My landlord. One small room that you can do like this. One, two, three, four. This place is bigger than that room. And the landlord of that room is here. <laughs> Is here. I'm happy to see you, sir. For being here, your life has changed. So I'm not talking story. Eh? So, what excuse do you have to give? And my marriage was on 1980. So that you say, ah, 5,000 that time was big money. It's two years ago, Abby. Uh -huh. So 5,000 naira two years ago was the same 5,000 naira today. So I said, I want us to get married. She said, how much you have in your whole bank? I said, it's 5,000. I withdraw the money and count it. I did a video. Eh? A video of myself. I said, this is all my money all over the world. All my life, 5,000. This is what I have now, but I'm fixing my marriage is next month. So you cannot say that money, money is your problem. You, you cannot be in this church and you'll be giving us excuse. So I carried out of five thousand, I carried three thousand and I printed wedding card, fifty pieces, DI printing wedding card I fixed the date of my wedding the upper month with 5,000 naira the only thing I wanted was on Sunday they will say I declare you husband and wife I did not care what I will wear I did not care the food they will eat I did not care the venue I did not care about anything 
I only wanted now from today you are husband and wife. That's all I wanted. That's marriage and I'm done. That was my only focus. Some of you, when you are talking about marriage, the first thing in your mind is to rent a what was that home? Amazing Grace. You rent a Shea Grace. You rent. You are looking for a way to rent. You see, ah, this one, Emerald, five hundred thousand. Your focus is on rent. Your focus is on food. Your focus is on Ash Ashebi. My focus was, I want to marry, this is my wife. So, that day. So, that's why I was blind. I, I was blind to every other thing. I did not hear. Two days to the wedding, no suit. 24 hours to the wedding, I did not have suit. And I did not give a damn. Hello. Hello. So eventually the wedding day came. Groom or oh, groom, come out now. Which guy is coming to carry you? I don't know. You did not prepare for any car to carry you. I don't know. Imo is a, my my best man. Stand up. That's my best man. <laughs> Sit down. My best man is the one that bought the suit when he saw that. Uh, he, he went and bought suits. Because I was ready to wear native to anywhere. What I came for was, I pronounce you husband. And, but amazingly, all those things came into play. Because I was determined. Somebody's daughter for one year and say you don't have money. How you keep somebody's daughter? You are dating. Right now, as I speak to you now, by the unction placed upon me, I destroyed that relationship. If you like, take yourself back there again. Whoever dates you. Whoever dates you one year, two years, three years is not your husband. I say it's not your husband. You don't need to. Um, where my focus? When you date somebody for five years, after your wedding, will you still go for honeymoon? Eh? Honey, what kind of honey are you going? Five years. I'm a, I'm a for you, Nuka. <laughs> which morning, which moon are you going again? Somebody that you have been together for five years of your life. What are you mourning? So these things is what we don't preach in churches because it's not going to be a blaming come again. But this word I'm saying is coming out from the mouth of God straight to your spirit. The word is enough for the wise. Hello. If you listen to what I'm saying to help you. Ask God to give you your, your wife. Ask God to give you your husband. If you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, it will come. It will come. She will come. And it's coming direct to you because it's coming. But if your husband is, somebody is saying hi to you, just because one guy has been you down for two years now, a young man is saying hello, a football, I'll give from that one that have pinned you down two years you have been you are binding witches binding wizard doing assignment but a physical human being has pinned you down uh, you 
are whining. They have pinned you down. This gentleman with suit sees you and says, Hello, sister. What I tell you? What I am grateful. You look down on everybody. You rubbish everybody. You rubbish anybody that say hi to you. You rubbish, rubbish this one just because you have been pinned down to the floor. And your head, your head, your head. So I scattered that relationship. 